Welcome back. We're here with Roger Reese. And next up, I want to talk to you about uh, about the journey of Nicholas Nickleby. You you won, as we we've said, you won the Olivier, you won the Tony Award. What was mm. what was the development of that show like? Uh, and, and consequently, the experience of, of moving it, transferring it from, from London to the United States. Well, I, I, I guess I was the, um, the eponymous hero, so I guess I'm sort of the recognizable, um, you know, um, uh, sort of face on that, on that production. But it belonged to everyone, and it belonged most especially for, to Trevor, who was running the company at that time. And, the, and this is the pragmatic aspect of this production. The Arts Council, which is the funding body in Great Britain, was going to cut the Royal Shakespeare Company um, finances in half that following year. So we had to create a piece of work that didn't have, need any royalties. And, uh, and so Trevor found a George Meredith book, I remember, but then he found Nicholas Nickleby, and we all talked about it. It was like, uh, and we were doing seven Shakespeare plays and 13 other <coughs> plays at the same time. Oh my gosh. You know, night after night, different one, different matinees. Everyone was in every play. There were 43 actors in the company. And he decided to do Nicholas Nickleby, and we rehearsed while we were doing everything else for seven months. When it first went on, nobody came to the theater. No, nobody was interested. And uh, Bernard Levin, who was a great writer, a great critic of the time, in the Times at the end of the first week, he wrote an article which said, are you crazy? This is magnificent. And suddenly the dam broke and everybody came. But a great group of people, but the actors especially, many who during the process of uh, Nicholas Nickleby, some left, some fell in love, some died, some got married. You know, it was just an evolving group of people who cared about this piece of work. To, to reiterate, you've had the opportunity to work with, with not only some of the most amazing actors and talent, but some of the most amazing writers, including Mel Brooks and Aaron Sorkin. What is it like to, to navigate your way through you know, text written by someone like Mel Brooks, who's a master of his, his particular voice, or someone like Aaron Sorkin, who's a master of, of, his, own, of his own genre? How do you... How do you dive into, into such rich material like that? I think it's a, it's a sort of special way, I think. And, and so someone like Aaron Sorkin, you, someone like Bernard Shaw, you cannot change a syllable. Many, many actors go into films and they go, well, I'm going to change this line. I'm going to, I, I, I can't say that. I'll say this, you know. And, you, and you, you put on an American accent when you said that. Did I? No, that, I didn't. Is that something that is exclusive to Americans? Yeah, that's <laughs> only Americans do that. <laughs> Yeah, British people only say the exact language. It's right. <laughs> Roger said it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, uh, but um, uh, this idea that, that I don't think I don't think actors really necessarily. I mean, lots of actors write wonderfully. Lots of you know Harold Yourself Harold included. Pinter was a writer. You know, um, I, I've worked for Tom Stoppard. Tom Stoppard sits in the rehearsal room, and if I if I, I'd say to him like on the real thing, you know, I was the first person to play Henry, and I, and I said, uh, I, I, I can't make, I'm, I'm hopeless, I can't make that work, and he grabbed my script, and he'd change it. This is Tom Stoppard, this is like, it's, it, to be so malleable, to be so, so pleasant, to be so interested in making the words on the page stand up in their three dimensions, mm. is the journey for everyone, to make it work, but I don't think, changing things completely just because you don't like it or because no an actor's job I know I've known some actors who their religion is perhaps they're Catholics or something so they won't be in plays where they swear or they won't use cuss words or anything like that well, it seems silly if you're an actor you should be prepared to do anything I think and serve the play the plays the thing someone said that once mm -hmm. yeah someone someone some old <laughs> dog <laughs> yeah, so so I'm interested in that, but but I, what I've found is that the writers I work with and the directors I work with, and they, uh, there's a sort of a confidence in knowing that things change. The, the the theory being that perfection is a moving point. I think mm -hmm. the minute you go, I've got it. It's too stiff. It's too strong. I've got it, and I'm going to move on. Is what you want. I think. Just telling the story is the job of everyone who's an artist in the theatre, and, and I would say the, an artist in any way. 
you know, you, you, you're describing something on a flat canvas. You're, you're, the consequential nature of everything is the interesting thing. Uh, shall we say, it, the painter puts down a mark on a canvas, a blank canvas. That's important, but it's probably not as important as where he puts the second mark. Mm. It's what's relative to your first statement. Uh, a writer will write the, the letter B, but will, he, will it be an O, or will it be followed by an R, or an E? And therefore, if it's a B or a B, what's the consequences of the next mark he's going to make? It's, there's, a, there's an interesting game to play here, and it's, it's a absolutely... It's tic-tac-toe, essentially. Well, yeah, yeah, it is. Where would we be without the alphabet? If we were, you know, I mean, I don't know. It's extraordinary. So for you, the story is the thing. Yeah, sure. Otherwise, why are we there? Plays are written about special days. Is that why you're, you're is that what draws you to Shakespeare? Because his, his story is so rich? Well, people sort of say there should be a moratorium on Shakespeare. You know, we shouldn't do it for a bit because we've done it so much. But Do you agree with that? No, I think it's by your bedside, along with Dickens and the Bible, perhaps, you know, for some people. Mm -hmm. It's you know it, the great expression of the human being. Uh, uh, the uh, iambic line, ten beats to a line, da 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 da, da, da is somewhere to place your humanity. It feels like a human. And now we take you back to CNN. Mm. Is an iambic line. And now we take you it back is. to CNN. It's sort of just the way we speak. It's sort of a, it is humanity. We'll be right back with Roger Reese. 